Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. We are sitting down with two of our favorite people. We're reunited and it feels so good. We are talking to Julie Cohen and Betsy West of the documentary Julia. Welcome back and thank you so much for taking some time out for Bitch Talk. Great to be here. Thank you so much. Bitches. <laughs> so, she can't help herself. Yeah, Just and- to have the opportunity <laughs> to say bitches yeah. at any moment. Yeah. yeah, We're happy to give it to you. Yeah. And, and you have <laughs> shouted it from across a busy room at us. And it's always been an <laughs> honor. <laughs> yeah. So, so can you give our audience just a quick rundown of what Julia is about? Julia is the phenomenal story of a woman who really changed America, changed the way that we think about cooking and eating, changed the way we think about television, Mm -hmm. and changed the way we think about women. Before Julia, American food was bland. (laughs) Uh, American food on television Mm -hmm. was barely existent and when it was it was incredibly boring women on television were usually either boring and housewifey or sex bombs julia was none of those things and she just broke every mold all right well and and we're done (laughs) you know she does that she just says everything the whole thing (laughs) i'm gonna ask about the two uh, gentlemen that are a part of this um film first and, and we'll get them out of the way i mean you know who who are these guys ron howard and brian grazer but um how did they jump onto the project you know um julie and i talked about doing a film about julia child for all the reasons that julie just mentioned and so we had a pitch meeting uh with um uh justin who is at Imagine Documentaries and works for Brian and Ron, and they had just started up their New York documentary office. And so we were going for this pitch meeting, which took place in a restaurant in back in the garden, and we had gotten ourselves all ready for it to give them the reasons that Julie just explained. So we sit down, and he said, okay, what are you guys, what are you guys here for? And we said... Julia's child. And he said, sold. (laughs) That was the pitch. (laughs) That was literally the pitch. We were like all ready to do all the other things. I think um, that Imagine Documentaries understood that Julia is a beloved character in America, really just an icon, and yet um, not really understood Totally. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have a kind of uh, characterization of Julia Mm -hmm. in their minds that uh, is based on Dan Aykroyd's impersonation on Saturday (laughs) Night Live. I mean, who can forget it? You know, Julia cutting herself and bleeding all over the chicken and, you know, (laughs) expiring on top of it. I mean, it's so funny. And Julia herself loved it. But it doesn't really... Uh, get at the heart of who Julia was and how Julia became Julia Child, which is a pretty amazing story. Right. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I want to thank you guys for the timing of this story as well, because it's just so nice to watch a really inspiring, uplifting story in, in this moment. And And a couple of the things that I really loved about her story were, one, she could have had a really cush life. She came from money. She could have just sat back and just you know, tanned, you know, whatever, whatever you do when you're rich. I don't know. Um, so, so I love that she chose adventure over the sense yeah. of comfort. And, and I also love that she didn't reach success until she was in her fifties. So um, do we. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, <laughs> yeah. You know, the interesting thing about Julia's background, as you say, she was a super privileged person, but that 
doesn't exactly make everything great. Like she, like yes, everything was perhaps handed to one on a silver platter. Certainly, she didn't have to worry about how is she going to make a living. The idea was you're going to go get a wonderful husband, and he's going to provide for you just as your dad provided for you. But you know, privilege, especially for a woman of Julia's era, that could be pretty constricting. Also, her family understood that she was going to go to college to get an education, but that was kind of supposed to be about it. I mean, as we use a soundbite in the film that actually I think is really kind of painfully cutting where she says, like, the idea was that women in my generation were broodmares. Like, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can learn a little something here and there, read French literature, whatever, but then, like, the whole, your your value is what kind of wife and what kind of mom you are, and you're not going to get to achieve much beyond that. And Julia just wanted something more for her life. But as you say, it took a while. She didn't really know what that more was. I mean, as her her grandnephew tells us, she had these vague ideas that she wanted adventure. And then World War II happened. And Julia, like a number of women, volunteered for the war effort. In her case, you know, working for the OSS, which is the spy agency, the precursor (laughs) of the CIA. I mean, a lot of people think Julia was a spy. She wasn't actually a spy. She was an office manager, but she did work with spies and she was posted to the Far East to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And that was an adventure, Mm -hmm. (laughs) very romantic. And that's where she met her extraordinary partner, Paul Child, and and really where her world just completely changed. So there's there's little surprises throughout the film, um, which I love, and I don't want to spoil them all. Um, but I, I was really um, touched by, because I didn't know about her support for Planned Parenthood and pro-choice, and, um, and the LGBTQ community. Um, can you talk a little bit about those surprises while you're making this documentary and also all of the archival footage that is in this film? Because it's impressive. Yeah. So um, we were f- surprised and fascinated by the Planned Parenthood story also. Um, it obviously isn't what Julia's most famous for, but... Um, Julia came out supporting reproductive rights, something she felt strongly about, um, in the 1980s and was really public about it. It wasn't just that she was writing checks to Planned Parenthood. It was that she became a Planned Parenthood spokesperson. She did public fundraisers. She invited people to things where it was like a cooking demonstration or a dinner, and then she would speak in Planned Parenthood's name. And this was in an era when you weren't getting a lot of celebrities doing that, never mind a celebrity like Julia, whose fan base were not coastal elites, but were middle America. Certainly a number of people who weren't going to love her view about reproductive rights, but the beautiful thing about uh, Julia is like she kind of didn't give a rat's ass about that. Like, you know, she was going to say what she was going to say. And um, certainly it was easier for her to do that because she was coming from a place of privilege. So like if someone cut her off, she knew that she was, she was always going to be okay. So she had, um, some advantages, but there's still something pretty admirable about someone who's willing to risk a little bit of their public image to stand up for what they believe in. Mm -hmm. And clearly it wasn't that big of a risk because she's still just one of the most beloved people in our history. But um, yeah, I love that that was part of the story, along with all the important topics we've already talked about, feminism, bringing culture to American society in terms of food. Um, But an underlying theme of the story that I was not expecting is sex. I mean, (laughs) Julia is very in touch with her sexuality, but also the food. Oh, my God. I never thought that a Niswa salad would turn me on. But you ladies have done it. So I'd like to thank you. And, And can you talk about just this underlying theme of sex throughout the film. Yeah, well, as I mentioned, Julia meets Paul Child in the Far East, and they have a very romantic sexual (laughs) relationship. Uh, They get married after the war, and uh, Paul is posted to Paris. I mean, what could be a more (laughs) romantic place to spend the early years of your marriage? And it seems that they really took advantage of it. Uh, Paul was a really fantastic photographer, and we loved the photographs that we found in Julia's archive that I think 
exude his love for his wife. Mm. And um, we kind of use the food in a way as a metaphor for what their sensuous relationship was like. It worked. <laughs> you know, for me, I don't know about you. As, as Julia, you know, Julia goes to France, falls in love with food as well immediately. You know, the first meal that she has is this amazing Sol Meunier that just like, you know, sets her off on this path to become a fantastic cook. And uh, she is going to the Cordon Bleu. She's coming home at lunchtime. She's cooking amazing meals for Paul. And then they are having, you know, an afternoon delight. It seems, as uh, Ruth Reichel says, read between the lines, that's what's going on. And, um, you know, one of the discoveries in the film, sort of proof of all of this, is the nude photo of... Julia, that Paul took, very, I think, tasteful, silhouetted, Mm -hmm. nude, but, um, you know, an example of what a very fulfilled marriage that they had. Yeah, you know, I think we had in mind the connection between food Food. and sex as part of this story, but it came together a lot for us when we were in France. When you interview French food experts about what's the meaning of food, they organically began talking about sex. Yeah. Um, like it, we include some of those, like, yeah. it's just like you sort of ask, like, what's so amazing about food? And like their answer is sex, like, you know, and that was true of the male food critic, um, we talked to who was probably a guy around 60 as well as, uh, Danielle Delpouche, the former, uh, Home, chef for Francois, for Francois Mitterrand, the French uh, president and the first woman to be a chef for the uh, 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 head of state in France. And, um, you know, she's probably around 80 years old or so, I'd say. And again, when I feel like when you asked her about yeah. food, like it took like two sentences before she's talking about sex. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's true. You give your love when you make your it's food. Your it's what you do with your fingers. With your <laughs> fingers, you are giving your love. <laughs> like, oh. It's for pleasure. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that did that did influence it. And then, you know, the, the food photography, the, the, the recipes oh, yes. that we... Yes chose to um to film were you know in in the case of the pear tart Mm -hmm. it's a pretty sexy pear tart (laughs) yeah and you know we were (laughs) yeah yeah well we're (laughs) shooting with uh you know two photographers one in new york was shooting in a kitchen that we set up uh that is a replica of julia's kitchen Mm -hmm. and then we um were also shooting in France with a cinematographer who specializes in food photography and was using, you know, these slow-mo camera and macro, you know, to make the food look very artistic. It almost doesn't, I mean, it just looks so cool with the juices dripping down. So, you know, when Julia was doing her show, you know, she came on television in 1963 It's black and white. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Julia's mesmerizing and the show was mesmerizing. The food was kind of gray gray and kind of yucky looking. (laughs) So we felt that this was an opportunity to bring this visual technology to bear to really um, show you what Julia was talking about (laughs) when she was talking about food. And we should say, though, what the food that's being cooked is the authentic Julia Child recipes being cooked the way that Julia prepared them? What's new and different is the level of cinematography. Yeah, this leads me into one of the side questions I had, and we have to wrap up soon, very sad. Um, but have either of you tried any of her recipes to to good luck? Or was it difficult to try and create a Julia Child recipe? No, you know, we both like to yeah. cook. Yeah. So um, I'm glad that you mentioned the salad niçoise because we yeah. both put salad niçoise on our regular rotation following mm. the filming of that particular yeah. scene, which mm. just yeah. makes it look so appealing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the visual of that salad yeah. is so beautiful. So I mean, beautiful. It, it tastes really good, too, but it's just it's so beautiful. It's just right. vibrant, wonderful. Yeah, no, we both, I mean, I I made a couple, about a week ago, I made the, the beef bourguignon. And, you know, Julia's recipes are complicated. And sometimes people do somewhat simplified versions of them. And I will say that I sometimes do that and don't go whole hog. But Julia actually made the pear tart, which I'm 
Very oh, impressive wow. That's before. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, and those potatoes that um, and the chef Anne Willen talks about, the British woman, which is actually, again, an interesting example of, you know, when you talk to the French people about food, they talk in this very se- sexual way. Anne did too, but like in a different, in in her own little British way. She was like, I'm ashamed to say that I'm constantly thinking about it. <laughs> in, in a way that, again, you sort of understand that she's, in, I get she, it, was, yeah. she was talking about roast beef, but like, you know, <laughs> the connection is there. I'd like to ask um, one last question. You know, Julia became this huge star in the 60s. As Julie said, she broke the mold of, of what a woman can be on TV. Um, but why do you think, and I'm saying this as two females, female podcasters talking to two female directors. So I understand there has been progress, but why do you think it's taken so long for us to find validity as as artists in this industry? You know, um, Gloria Steinem sometimes says that revolutions take a hundred years to affect. And I think that maybe that's true about the women's movement, that um, we sort of thought, oh, we had women's liberation in the 1970s. That's it. Well, of course, that's not the case, you know, and that it's been there are steps forward and steps back. There's backlash and then you go forward again. And in terms of recognizing the accomplishments of women, I think that's something that we're still doing. You know, women's stories have been ignored or marginalized, trivialized, and, you know, it's an opportunity, I think, for women who are doing what we're all doing is to find those stories and to tell them. Amen. (laughs) I wanted to talk about Dateline producing, but we can talk about that. All right. Well, thank you so much again. We've been talking to Julie Cohen and Betsy West of the documentary Julia. And thank you for continuing to tell these stories that are so important and they lift us up. And we love you guys. Love you guys. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks again to Julie and Betsy for joining us on the program. Always a pleasure and a blast to hang with them and catch up. Don't forget, their documentary, Julia, which is about Julia Child, is in theaters now. You can check our show notes to link up to times and more on the film. Be sure to join us next week when we welcome a new friend to the show, educator and scholar Kate Slater. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions.